Hi there, this is Nishant Raghunath welcoming you to a new video under my study for income tax. In this video, we'll be learning about the perquisite use of motor car. That is, a motor car provided by an employer to an employee for the purpose of usage only. Alright, so double underline the word use. There is no transfer happening here, it's just use. This is a very common perquisite that is found in our country. You might even know people who are actually enjoying the benefit of this perquisite. See, it's nothing but a case where an employer provides an employee with a car, which the employee can use for official purposes, private or personal purposes, or as a mix of both. Say the employer provides the employee a car, which the employee uses for travel from his residence, his or her residence, to the workplace. From one workplace to another, and anything of that sort. So that is purely official purposes. So the employer can put a clause wherein it stated that this car shall only be used for official purposes alone. Or it can be a case where the employer provides the employee with a car and asks him to do whatever he wants to do with it. That is, the employee can decide to use the car only for his official purposes or to use the car for partly official purposes, partly private or personal purposes. Or finally, he can use it only for his personal or private uses. So in short, three categories of usage, right? Fully official, partly official, partly private, and finally, fully private. Okay, but when it comes to valuation of perquisite, when it comes to Income Tax Act rules to consider an item as perquisite, when this car is used only for official uses, it is not to be treated as perquisite. We learned it in the intro video, right? In the intro video for perquisite. When a perquisite or when an item is provided to an employer, sorry, by an employer to an employee, and if it's only for the purpose of official usage, nothing is to be deemed as a taxable item. Nothing there is to be deemed as a taxable provision no perquisite shall be deemed as a taxable perquisite if it's provided only for official purposes. So yes, now let's see what the study material or the Income Tax Act tells us about this perquisite. So first and foremost, this is nothing but the usage of a motor car which is facilitated by the employer for an employee. So just usage, double underline usage. There is no transfer of ownership here. There can be cases where an employer transfers a car to the employee and that will be treated as a perquisite but not under this item. It will be treated as a completely different item. It is coming, it is coming in the, you will see the item in coming videos wherein a car is transferred to an employee but not here. So herein, the employer facilitates the usage by taking care, taking care of expenses related to usage of the car by the employee. You know right, when we have a car, when we are using it, there are a lot of expenses that comes with it. Yeah, so here the employer decides to take care of all the expenses that an employee will have to incur while using the car. Okay, so for analyzing this perquisite, we can categorize we can categorize this whole perquisite into three ways. That is three categories on the basis of who owns the car and who maintains the car. Category number one, the car is owned by the employer and the car is also maintained by the employer. So employer provides the car, which is his own or which he rents out, and also employer takes care of the maintenance and running expenses. That's category number one. Category number two, employer owns the car, that is the employer provides the car to the employee, but the employee maintains, employee takes care of everything related to running and maintaining the car. All right, now finally, Car owned by employee, but every expense with respect to running and maintenance taken care of by the employer. This is like an own your car scheme. This is the most common scheme that we see in our country when it comes to a perquisite with respect to usage of motor car, wherein the employee owns a car, the employer does not have to worry about owning the car, but tells the employee that I'll take care. The employer tells the employee that I'll take care of all the maintenance and running expenses. So these are the three categories wherein the usage of motor car will be treated as a perquisite when an intervention with respect to owning the car or maintaining the car comes from the hand of the employer. So in all the three cases, if you check, at least one item, either owning or maintaining, is taken care of the employer. If none is taken care of the employer, there is absolutely no point in calling it as a perquisite, right? Nothing is going from the employer to employee, right? For it to be treated as an item of salary, there should be some kind of flow of an item from an employer to an employee. So if you check in all these three cases, either owning or maintaining or both is taken care of by the employer, right? So obviously 
based on the relationship between the two parties that is employer employee an item is flowing from employer to the employee okay so these are the three categories on the basis of the car basis of just the car alone now for determining the value of this perquisite we categorize these cases again that is each of these cases we take up and categorize these cases again into two that is for what purpose this car has been used that is whether this car has been used only for private or personal purposes or whether it has been used for partly private and partly official see i had told you previously if it's used completely for official no taxability only when a private use comes in the question of taxability arises okay so based on the category of usage we determine the value of perquisite so there are two categories of usage based on which the cost or value of perquisite is determined so category number 1 fully private or fully personal use category number 2 partly private and partly official so these are the two categories on the basis of which cost is to be determined so when is when the car is used only for private or personal use the cost is determined the value of the perquisite is determined on the basis of whatever the actual expenses have been incurred by the employer so when it's a fully private or personal use the value of the perquisite is based on actual that is whatever that has been going out of the pocket of the employer for the purpose of providing this car for usage for the employee all the actual expenses incurred by the employer all right when it's partly private and partly official use the value or the cost of the perquisite is decided on the basis of certain set amounts or standards so here there is no play with respect to actuals but it's decided on the basis of certain set standards okay so keep that in mind when it's fully private or fully personal use value based on actuals when it's partly private partly official based on set amounts or standards fine but then also i just want to point out one thing the third category of car usage sorry the third category of cars that is owned by employee and maintained by employer in that scenario the value of the car when it's used for partly official and partly personal purposes will be determined as a mix of both actual amounts and set standards just keep that in mind do not take notes right now i just want you to have that idea in mind all right we'll be having an in-depth analysis of all these cases in this video itself so therein you can take notes for now just keep that in mind so yes that's all that i wanted to give you as an introduction of motor car usage i'll quickly sum up the introduction always keep in mind this is not a transfer of motor car rather it's just facilitating the usage of motor car for an employee by the employer there is no transfer of ownership happening herein the employer takes care of all the expenses or some of the expenses when it comes to running and maintaining and using that car for the employee in this perquisite we categorize the car based on who owns and who maintains the car so the three categories arising out of such basis are one owned by employer and maintained by employer two owned by employer maintained by employee three owned by employee maintained by employer so in short three categories wherein either owning the car or maintaining the car or both comes from the hands of the employer okay if nothing comes from the employer no taxability i told you about previously yeah so all these three categories will further be divided into two for the basis of determining the value so the division is as follows whether the car is used for private use alone or whether the car is used for partly private and partly official and it's based on the usage the value is to be determined if it's fully personal or fully private use the value of the car that is the cost of such perquisite is based on actuals when it's partly official and partly private use it's based on set amounts or standards but keep in mind for the third category wherein the employee owns the car and maintenance expenses are met by the employer that is own your car scheme it is a mix of both actuals and set amounts or standards when it comes to determination of the value of the perquisite so yes that's all the introduction that i wanted to give you guys with respect to this perquisite i'm hoping you have a really good conceptual clarity with regards to usage of motor car as a perquisite in salaries in case you have any doubts please feel free to reach out i ensure you that the best will be taken care of from my side to provide you with an amazing learning experience so let's head into the in depth analysis of this perquisite yeah so i'll be taking you guys to an excel file where and i've broken down this whole perquisite into few charts 
which will make the study super super simple if you check your study materials there are possibilities that this perquisite has been taught in a descriptive manner or a tabulated manner and there are chances that it might confuse you in order to avoid that confusion i have opted for this chart basis wherein it is going to be very very easy for you guys to study the perquisite based on each scenario and thanks to these charts a comparative study can be made for each categories i told you right there are three categories of cars and two categories of usage if you learn one category as in the chart of one category it will be easy for you to apply your logic and imagine not imagine work out that chart for all those categories so let's head to the excel file now here it is the name of the focus that i have highlighted it in yellow the three cases the categories based on who owns and maintains the car in blue and in green what you see are the categories on the basis of usage of the car all right so three categories where in one the car is owned by employer or hired by employer and the running and maintenance expenses are met by employer owning and running taken care of by employer category 2 owned by employer maintenance by employee category 3 owned by employee maintenance by employer this is own your car scheme you can put this in bracket own your own sorry own your car scheme the most common way in which the perquisite of usage of motor car is provided in our country so let's head into the in depth analysis of all these categories so category number 1 owner employer running and maintenance expenses met by employer so it's necessarily not just a case where the employer is the owner employee can actually hire the car and provide so it's better to say the employer is the owner or the hirer or the hirer okay either the employer owns the car or the employer takes the car on hire and provides the car to the employee so in such a scenario if the car is used only for private or personal use i told you in this category the cost is based on actuals right so if the car is used only for private or personal use what are the actual costs the employee will incur one cost for owning the car and one cost for maintaining the car with respect to owning the car i have referred to as oc that is owning cost the cost will be either in form of depreciation if the employer owns the car or in the form of higher charges if the employer hires the car right so whatever the actual cost of depreciation is and this depreciation is to be charged at 10% or whatever the actual higher charges are fine as simple as that with respect to running and maintenance expenses whatever the actual expenses incurred by the employer rmc stands for running and maintenance cost fine in case a driver is provided whatever the actual cost incurred by the employer for providing that driver all right add these three you get the value of the car the actual owning cost which can be in way of depreciation if the car is owned by the employer or by way of higher charges if the car is hired by the employer actual running and maintenance cost actual driver cost if provided by the employer will be the value of the car now if this car is used partly for private and partly official you know the value will be based on set standards now the standards is based on the power of the car by power what i refer to is the cubic capacity that is the cc of the car if the car is less than or equal to 1600 cc say if it's a swift or if it's a baleno or if it's an i20 the cost will be one if the car is more than 1600 cc say if it's a fortuner if it's an endeavor the car will have a certain different kind of costs all right so it goes without saying the cost of swift will be far lesser than the cost of a fortuner right so if it's a swift the cost of the car will be 1800 per month so 1800 into number of months provided for usage if it's a fortuner it will be 2400 per month all right so any car below 1600 cc in our example a swift 1800 per month any car more than 1600 cc in our example a fortuner will be 2400 per month now that is the cost of the car and in case if a driver is provided the cost is flat out at 900 per month regardless of the car this is applicable for all the three categories the cost of driver if the usage is partly private or partly official is 900 per month as simple as that because the driver does not have to put in more effort when driving a fortuner when compared to driving a swift right as in there won't be any extra payment for a driver based on what the car is right because all the cars the effort or the work done by the drivers one and the same more or less the same so 
900 per month. So that's it for category A. Now let's go to category B, where the car is owned or hired by the employer, but running and maintenance expenses are met by the employee. So I'm giving you an exercise, a task. In your mind, just in your mind, work out the cost when it's fully private or fully personal use. Just, just think what might be the things appearing as a taxable perquisite in this category of usage. What all should come there? The employer is providing us with a car, right? So definitely there is an owned cost from the side of employer. It can be depreciation or actual hire charges. Running and maintenance expenses are met by the employee, us, the employee. So should that be a taxable perquisite? No, right? Because that's an expense that we are incurring. We are not receiving any benefit from the side of employer with respect to running and maintenance expenses. So no RMC will come here. Driver, if it's provided by the employer, yes, whatever the actual. That's it, as simple as that. Let's check. Owning cost, 10% depreciation or actual high charges. If driver is provided, if employer provides the driver, then actual cost of the driver as well. As simple as that. Yeah, got it? Finished. That is the first category. A small spelling error. Small spelling error. Yeah, right. Now, if it's partly private or partly official, if it's partly private or partly official, Again, on the basis of whether the car is Swift or Fortuna. Now here, since the employee takes care of a part of expenses with respect to running and maintenance cost, the cost of partly private and partly official when compared to category A will be a bit lesser. So here, the Swift will only be charged at 600 per month. The Fortuna will be charged at 900 per month because a major chunk of owning that, using that car is taken care of by the employee. Employee takes care of running and maintenance expenses. So you get a reduction in the standard limits here. So a 1,800 goes all the way down to 600, 2,400 goes all the way down to 900. Driver 19 the same. Driver 900, flat rate. Simple, right? Yeah. Now category C, owner, employee, running and maintenance met by employer. So when it's fully prior to personal use, what expense do you think will appear there as the taxable perquisite? Definitely not the owning cost because the car is owned by employee. So no owning cost benefits is received by the employee from the employer. The only benefit the employee receives is with respect to the running and maintenance cost. So if it's fully private or personal under this category C, under that category, cost of purchase will be just the running and maintenance cost. Now in case, now in case if employer provides driver, if employer provides the driver, then the actual cost in case if the employer provides, then the actual cost, that's it. But that's a very rare scenario. The employers usually do not provide a driver when the car is owned by the employee. In own your car schemes, it's very rare for the employer to provide a driver because the employee will himself or herself set the driver whom he or she wants to drive their car. Okay, simple. Now, partly private or personal and partly official usage. Here, for this category, it will be a mix of both the set standard limits and actuals. I told you right to keep this in mind. Let's see how that works. First take whatever running and maintenance cost has been incurred by the employer. Take whatever cost has been incurred by the employer. Okay. From that, from that, deduct the higher of the following. Deduct higher of A or B. Deduct higher of A or B. A is the standard, the same standard as you saw in category a, wherein the car is owned by employer and maintained by employer. So deduct an amount based on this standard. So if it's a Swift, you, you are eligible for a deduction of 1800 per month for the car. And if the employee that if you are giving or if you are employing a driver, then 900 per month. If it's a Fortuna, 2400 per month and a 900 per month for the driver the employee is keeping. The reason why this deduction is given is because you own the car. 
See, this is a car which you bought for your own use. You could have decided to use this car for your personal purpose only, but instead you decided you will use this car for your official purposes as well. So when you use a car more, it is pretty evident that the car's life will decrease very quickly. All the parts will wear out quickly. You will incur more service cost. You will incur a lot of expenses with respect to maintenance, spare part replacement, etc, etc, right? So you as an employee could have just used this car for your own private or personal purpose. But you as an employee decided to put in your car the asset that you bought out of your money for your office use as well. So the office is getting a benefit from your money. Okay. So in this scenario, the employee is given a chance to deduct an item for his generosity where he provided his car for office use by the Income Tax Act. So Income Tax Act is giving this deduction. You can deduct an amount based on this standard or or if you, if the usage of your car for the official purposes has been documented, if all the actual amounts you spent for using this car for your official purposes has been booked, then that value. Then that value. So take the value either on the basis of the standard or if you have documented all these values on the base of actual expenses that you have incurred for using this car for official purposes, then that value, compare them both and take the higher, take the higher, double underline, higher. Let me just highlight it over here so that you won't forget. Higher of the following, higher of the following, bold, italics, underline, slightly bigger size deduct higher of the following higher of the standard amount and B the actual amounts incurred by the employee if it is documented and recorded in the books of the company if there is no B then a that's it deduct the higher deduct whatever amount you get out of this comparison from the actual expenses the employer incurs and that will be the value of the car Say the employer incurs 50,000 for running and maintaining this car. Now out of A and B, you have a total of 45,000. You have the higher as 45,000. As the cost that income tax gives as a deduction to be taken from this 50,000. Deduct 45,000 from 50,000, 5,000 will be your taxable value of car as a perquisite. Understood? Pretty simple, right? Very easy. Yeah. All that you have to remember is, all that you have to remember is, in category C, when it's partly private or personal use, it is a mix. Actual expenses met by employer minus standard expenses of the employee or in case the employee actually gets the actual expenses incurred by him recorded in the books, actual expenses for official purposes recorded in the books, then compare those two and take the higher. Fine. That's all for this perquisite. Now, I broke down this whole perquisite into three simple charts. Study my charts alone, get the concepts clear and right in your head, and then read what's given in your study materials. Okay, so I'll quickly sum up. Category A, owned by employer, running and maintenance expenses met by employer. Fully private, fully personal use. Owning cost plus actual running and maintenance cost. Owning cost can be depreciation or higher charges. If a driver is provided, then actual driver charges. That's it. If it's partly private, partly official. If it's a Swift, 1800 per month. If it's a Fortuna, 2400 per month. If a driver is provided, 900 per month. In these scenarios, the drivers are provided by the employer. Okay. Driver by employer. Here also driver provided by employer. That's why a perquisite comes. If the employee had been putting in the driver, then no perquisite will come with respect to the driver's expenses. Okay. But then that's a rare scenario. The employees usually don't put in a driver when the employer provides the car and employer takes care of the running and maintenance expense. Next, owner employer running and maintenance expense employee. Owner employer maintenance employee. So when it's fully private or fully personal use, only the owning cost is to be taken because maintenance is taken by the employee. The employee is not getting any benefit with respect to maintaining the car. The only benefit, the only perquisite is for owning the car. So owning cost, either depreciation at 10% or actual or actual high charges. If the employer provides a driver, then actual driver costs. 
If it's partly private and partly official, Swift 600, Fortuna 900 per month. Driver flat out 900 per month. Next, owner employee owned, sorry, owner employee maintained by the employer. When it's fully private or fully personal, the only perk is suit that the employee receives here is in form of maintenance expense. So the actual maintenance expense. If, if and only if the employer provides the driver, then the actual cost of the driver. But then this is a very, very rare scenario. Very rare scenario. If it's partly private and partly official, a mix of both actuals and standards. Actuals for the actual cost incurred by the employer for running and maintenance. Actual cost incurred by the employer. Running and maintenance by employer. It goes without saying this is an employer expense because the car is owned by employee and running and maintenance met by employer. EMPR stands for employer. I'm not expanding it because it will not fit in the cell. So actual expenses of running and maintaining the car by the employer minus, minus something based on standards with respect to a deduction provided by the M Income Tax Act to the taxable person that is the SSC that is the employee so on the base of standards if it's a Swift 1800 if it's a Fortuna 2400 with the driver if kept by the employee 900 900 flat 900 also if the actual expenses incurred by the employee for official purposes are recorded in books if it is documented then compare that uh, amount recorded with the standard and take the higher value okay that amount is to be deducted from your actual expenses met by the employer will give you the value of the car as simple as that i'm hoping you guys got a really good understanding of the in-depth analysis of this perquisite if you have any doubt please 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 feel free to reach out i am here to ensure that you guys have a five star experience from learning with me so if you have any doubts or require any clarification, have any queries with respect to income tax, do reach out. I am here to give you the best explanation from my side so that learning income tax will be an absolutely enjoyable experience for you guys. With that said, closing this video, see you in my next one wherein we'll be discussing another work of shit. So yes, see you in my next video. Till then, take care and goodbye. Happy learning.